Hello everybody and welcome back. Today, or rather tonight, we are reacting to two songs that were surprise dropped by Beyonce. <laughs> I was partly listening to the Super Bowl, mostly because I'm not a big fan of Super, like football per se, but also I kind of wanted to skip the uh, halftime show so that I can react to that with you guys. This will be upcoming as soon as the NFL puts up the performance on their YouTube channel. But in the meantime, I was scrolling on social media and what do I see? See, I'm Canadian, so I don't get the American ads, by the way. So I had to figure out through social media. I could not figure out through watching the actual game with the ads. But yeah, Beyonce dropped two songs and announced her upcoming album, Act Two, which is due on March 29th, two days before my birthday. Day. What a birthday gift. <laughs> we're literally barely hours after the two singles, I guess lead singles, were released on digital streaming platforms, and so we're gonna listen to them together. Also, interestingly enough, I saw a theory online many months ago where Beyonce throughout three acts was reclaiming music genres that were actually created by African American people. And so the first one was house music, which she did with Renaissance, and the video was stating that she was heading after into country music and then rock music and it's interesting because there's clearly a country theme to the first two singles at least from the visuals I see I have no idea what the uh, actual music sounds like but also the titles being Texas Hold'em referencing Texas as well and 16 carriages which carriages obviously countryside situation cowboy whatever you want to that visual so yeah without further ado let's jump right into it So first we're going to do Texas Hold'em, and then we're going to do 16 Carriages. Okay, we're really going country. This ain't Texas, Ooh. ain't no Hold'em. Hey. So pack your Lexus, Ooh. and throw your keys up. Whoa. If I can't slow dance with you, Ooh. come throw some sugar on me, honey, too. Don't be a bitch, come take it to the floor now. <laughs> As a tornado in my city, that shit ain't pretty. Uh huh. One step to the right, we headed to the dive bar. We always thought was nice. Huh? I can't read your mind. This ain't Texas. Ain't no holding. Wow. This was not on my 2024 bingo card. <laughs> that is crazy. That is like the classic type of country, not the new country. Wow. This ain't Texas. Ain't no holding. Lay our cards down, 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 down. But it's it's so nice to hear with her voice that genre too. Ooh, it's a real live boogie and a real live hold down. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> Take it to the I mean, that's a very nice outro to the song. Beyonce has getting me going... Uh, yeehaw! Yeehaw! Which I'm not necessarily typically the biggest fan of, but that is so interesting because at the same time, it's like, there's this big controversy of her never getting album of the year. And I think that because most of her albums have been R&B, R&B influenced, or very, you know, non-middle or Western, how do you call it? No. Okay, I'm gonna call it what it is, white people music. <laughs> Her music has been non-white people music for a good reason too, cause she's made, I can't even find the right words to describe her, the quality and the excellence of her music. But I think 
she might be aiming to get that album of the year by pleasing that portion or proportion of the members of the Recording Academy with a genre that speaks to them. So I think this might be much more of a artistic move than a commercial move because I feel like her first album, as artistic as it was and as amazing as it was, it was really destined to be accompanied with the tour and like really like break uh, record and be that commercial hit. This time, I don't think she's aiming for that. She's aiming for the artistic relevance and proving her versatility and talent. I'm a little bit mind blown by this. I don't think it might be followed up with a tour per se. If it is, then I think it might be a tour really focused in the States more than anything. I don't know how much of a commercial success that will be be per se. I'm putting my, you know, my hand in fire, betting on that. But definitely, I, I think, like, it's it's gonna be a, a hit in the southern states because of that relevancy of that type of music, if that makes any sense. I'll see you in the editing after if that made any sense. And now we're gonna head into 16 Carriages, which I, assuming that is gonna be in the same realm, And ride with my dreams away to the summer sunset on a long black road on the tears I fight. Sixteen carriages. Whoa. Holy night on a long black road on the tears I fight. All those runs. Had to leave my home at an early age. I saw mama praying. I saw daddy grind. It's been umpteen summers and I'm not in my bed on the back of the bus in a bunk with the band. Going so hard, gotta choose myself. Underpaid and overwhelmed. Underpaid and overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy because I really see it's a little bit like the first time that I I think I get this from her music. I perceive her upbringing in this. Yes, there was Daddy Lessons from Lemonade and that was kind of this like initial foot in the door to that universe. I think she tested it. It worked well. She had a bit of presence. Uh, I specifically remember uh, she performed with the uh, chicks I think at the CMAs at some year after Lemonade was released. Yeah, nothing more than that, but this is really getting, like, it's providing some sort of insight into how she was raised and that whole, like, following the dream mentality. That's actually really interesting. Still working all my life, you know. Only God knows, only God knows, only God knows. Oh, those runs. Driving away while I watch them ride with my fears away to the watch them ride with my fears away to the sun. Oh, her voice. And that's, I think, the beauty in the production. It, it's leaving that focus on her voice. I got art to make. I got love to create on this holy night. It's been 38 summers and I'm out of my bed. On the back of the bus and I'm up with the band. <laughs> Still working on my life, you know. Only God knows. Only God knows. Only God knows. 16 carriages driving away while I'm 16 carriages. Wow. I personally haven't heard many voices like that in country per se. Like this is rare. Mama crying, I saw daddy lying, had to say Whoa. Legacy, if it's the last thing I do, you'll remember me. Cause we got something to prove. Wow. Sixteen carriages driving away while I watch them ride with my dreams away. You know, at some point, it's crazy because when I look at the tour, a couple of the designs that she used on tour to perform the part of her set that has thick all up in your mind and drunken love is a very cowboy to flame costume. And I think that might have been like a, a, a sort of Easter egg as to what was coming up next, which was the country sound. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm caught a little bit off guard. But also, because of that theory I had heard on TikTok, I'm kind of not surprised. I think it's a smart move. If I'm putting bets 
on the upcoming album. I think it's going to be a very personal album. It's going to dive deep into her background. It's going to not necessarily always focus on her vocals, but much more the storytelling. And I think that is something that we didn't have as much in the previous album. The previous album, I think the major focus was production. This is going to be about storytelling. And it's going to be a whole different side of Beyonce that we're going to see in this next album. I am absolutely looking forward to hearing about that and diving into that lore that made Beyonce Beyonce. And like I said, having a voice like that on country music is not something that we hear very often. It's pretty epic if you ask me. She has such an undeniable, versatile voice and it's pretty darn cool to see something like this happen, especially because she's earned all the success that she wants to possibly earn. Like, she can do whatever she wants at this point. Like, this is an artist just being an artist and not caring about, you know, the financials of it and the commercial success of it. Like I said, I still, I firmly believe that she's going after that part of the Recording Academy uh, members that still, you know, are kind of inclined to vote for the very traditional Southern American sound, I feel, which explains why a lot of the albums that have won over years have been either very country, grassroots, blues influenced, uh, very traditionally in the in the mindset that like those sounds were created by African American people, the white adopted music genres. So, wow, it's probably not going to be my favorite album of all time from hers, but it's definitely going to be an interesting project to dive into. So this was my reaction to the two singles that came out, 16 Carriages and Texas Hold'em. It's a very short reaction video, it's very different than what I typically do. I did this because I was able to and the timing was right, but definitely looking forward to reacting to the album. If you want to be there with me when I do that, don't forget to subscribe. Also, leave a comment as to what you think is going to come from this album, any predictions that you have to make, any comments on the current singles, and uh, like the video as, you know, per usual, the YouTube stuff. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!